Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. Hello, everybody, and welcome into a special edition of the new Locked On Now podcast, a YouTube-only podcast, as we are just hours away from the start of the 2021 NBA draft, a draft with a ton of excitement and question marks surrounding it, whether it's what's going to happen really from pick six onward, what teams are going to be making moves, wheeling and dealing, stars wanting out or wanting in. There's so many things going on surrounding this draft, really the kickoff to what's expected to be an offseason of fireworks. I'm very, very excited about it. My name is Matt George. I'm your host here of Locked On Now, also the host of the Locked On Kings podcast. And on this Locked On Now show, we are going to be looking at some of the draft wins for different NBA teams. Our local experts will be telling us what a win looks like on draft night for their respective team. And we're going to start going in order. We know the top of this draft is stacked. And the fact that the Detroit Pistons won the lottery makes it all but guaranteed that they're taking Cade Cunningham, right? Well, we've heard rumors and conversations, the possibility of the Pistons going in another direction, other teams trying to trade up to one. Who knows if it's a smokescreen or not, but for the Locked On Pistons, this choice is easy. What's to do, everybody? Koofy Hill here, host of the Lockdown Pistons podcast, and the NBA draft to be a win for the Detroit Pistons if they simply, my God, I swear to God, if they simply just do the obvious pick, if they simply don't try to outsmart themselves, if they don't try to be the smartest guy in the room, all they have to do is simply take Kate Cunningham. There's nothing else about it. You faded for Kate all season. You got the luck in the lottery. He's sitting there right there for you. I don't give a damn about how good Jalen Green is. I don't care how good Evan Mobley is. I don't care about this trade offer with OKC of SGA and six. To simply take Kate Cunningham, it's he's sitting right there. I mean, we have Jay Billis saying that he's possibly the most complete prospect to ever come to the NBA draft. We have other people saying he's possibly the third best prospect of this decade. Why are you passing him up? Don't pass him up. Please, Pistons. You got the lottery win. Just take Kate Cunningham, and you are the winners of the draft. There's no nothing anybody else can do. Nobody else in this draft, no other team, no other locked-on team can compete with a Kate Cunningham. Just take them. The Houston Rockets were one of those teams reportedly interested in moving up to number one overall and have a chance for Cade Cunningham. I highly doubt that is going to happen, but it doesn't sound like the Rockets are married to any one particular pick. Jalen Green is the guy most of us have at that number two spot, but for Locked On Rockets, the right move is just finding the right piece. This year's NBA draft will be a win for the Houston Rockets as long as they come away with the player that they truly believe can be a big piece of their future moving forward. Now, what I mean by that is, does that mean that's Jalen Green? Does it mean it's Evan Mobley? Maybe it's Cade Cunningham. Maybe they finally cave to whatever, you know, the high demands are from the Detroit Pistons and trade up to the number one overall slot. But ultimately, as long as the Rockets get their guy, the person that they think has the capability to be a foundational piece of this franchise moving forward, that is an ultimate win for this team. And then the cherry on top of that would be knocking it out of the park at picks 23 and 24 or packaging one of those picks, if not both of them, to move up a little bit higher in the draft if they hold somebody in high regard somewhere in that mid-tier lottery range. So if they're able to make a trade and move up, that would be an absolute win. But ultimately, the fact that they're just coming away with a pick in this year's draft is huge. They just need to get the right guy. And Rafael Stone and company have done all the work in the world to make sure that they know who they want to walk away with in this draft at the number two spot. Unlike the Rockets, the Cleveland Cavaliers have their eye on one name in particular, and it's a big one. Hey everyone, Evan Damerl here, co-host of Locked On Cavs, and the NBA draft would be a win for the Cleveland Cavaliers if they take Evan Mobley with the third overall pick. In the famous words of Bo Burnham, don't overthink it, just look in my eyes, don't be scared, don't be shy, come on in, Evan Mobley's just fine, because in any other draft, Mobley would be the consensus number one pick. And it's a huge win for Cleveland to get him with the third overall pick. And also, 
Just think of it, the Cavs have a nice assembly of young players, and fans might think Colin Sexton's the guy, but they would finally have the guy, and I hate this term, a unicorn in Evan Mobley. Lucky, lucky Toronto Raptors, just a couple seasons after winning the NBA Finals, here they are with a top four pick in an extremely talented draft. There's question marks about replacing Kyle Lowry, question marks about the future of Pascal Siakam in Toronto, but for the Locked On Raptors, draft night is all about keeping it simple. The NBA draft would be a win for the Toronto Raptors if they just keep it simple. There is no need to overcomplicate this one. They've already won in a way by moving up to number four from number seven on lottery night. And now they get to choose whoever's left between Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, and Jalen Suggs, the three guys who have long been considered the second, third, and fourth best prospects in this class. All the reporting suggests it's going to be Jalen Suggs there at number four. And I think he's absolutely the easy pick there for the Raptors to make. He fits the team from a bunch of different perspectives. He's a good cultural fit. He's a good two-way player, which the Raptors desperately need. They need some ball handling and playmaking in the half court. And he profiles as a guy who could potentially, you know, take the baton from Kyle Lowry and become the new face of the franchise if, in fact, Lowry is out the door this offseason. The Raptors have a long track record of developing guys who maybe don't project as much into something more, and so you could see them maybe reach for a Scotty Barnes or Jonathan Kaminga here. I don't think that's the move here. I think you go with the safe pick and Suggs, who's a very clear fit on the team and can contribute from day one. Barnes and Kaminga are going to take a longer time. Barring some trade out there for the Raptors to get some sort of superstar with that number four pick in a package, I really think Jalen Suggs is the move here. Keep it simple, and the Raptors will have won on NBA Draft Night. As for the Orlando Magic, two top 10 picks is really a power position. Do you want to try and package those picks together and move up or trade for a star? Who knows? But Locked On Magic is just looking to add talent the best way possible. This is Philip Rossman-Reich, the host of Locked On Magic. And the NBA draft would be a win for the Orlando Magic if they get their future star or they get some player that can help them continue to grow and build and all that yada, 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 yada. Look, the Orlando Magic are a rebuilding team right now. So the biggest thing that they have to do is just bring in talent. They need talent. They need capable NBA players. And the biggest thing they need is a star. The Magic are probably not gonna win very many games this year. They're simply too young. And, and unless they get like a true breakthrough player in this draft, they're not gonna be competing for the playoffs even in the Eastern Conference. So very likely they will be back in this lottery position next year. So the main goal is to get the most talented and best players you can. Players that you can truly build around. Players that can truly be a foundation for this team. It's not just about a short-term fit. It is about a long-term fit. If the Magic can find their star in this draft, it will be a humongous win. If the Magic can get a role player or rotation player or a, a key second or third guy that can be with this team moving forward, that will be a win. Right now, the Magic just need the most talented and best players they can find, and that's what this draft will hopefully give them. Surprise, surprise, the Sacramento Kings are back in the lottery, but there just might be a player or two at number nine that can help this Kings team do what they haven't been able to do for 15 years. This is Matt George, host of the Locked on Kings podcast, a win on draft night something that has eluded the Kings for the majority of this 15-year playoff drought. But last season, the Kings got a win, Tyrese Halliburton falling all the way to 12. I think it's too much wishful thinking for the Kings to have Scotty Barnes or Jonathan Kaminga fall to them at nine. So what is a win for the Kings on draft night 2021? Well, it's acquiring a immediate impact type player that'll help the Kings end this playoff drought. Now, there might be some prospects like Franz Wagner or Moses Moody who may be able to fit that bill, but that's a lot of pressure to put on a rookie. So I will say a win, the biggest win on draft night is the Kings finding a way to use the ninth pick to pair with either Buddy Heald or Marvin Bagley to bring back immediate impact veteran players and also hopefully open up a little bit of cap space. I cannot wait for this draft. Should be a fun night. We'll all wait in anticipation to see what the Sacramento Kings do. Suddenly, the Memphis Grizzlies have found themselves with a top 10 pick. They really got this offseason going with their trade with the New Orleans Pelicans. But the Locked On Grizzlies podcast wants more aggression. Hello, this is Sean Coleman with the Locked On Grizzlies podcast. The Memphis Grizzlies win the 2021 NBA Draft, but they simply stay aggressive. That's right. They just simply need to stay aggressive. They already have made a great trade with the New Orleans Pelicans to move up from 17 to 10. Now, at 10, the Grizzlies need to fit multiple needs with this pick. Number one, take an upside swing. But number two, get a big way, big, big, get a big 
two-way wing who could shoot like a Moses Moody or potentially get one of the better shot creators in the draft like a James Boatnight. And if it requires a trade-up, stay aggressive and look for that trade-up. Make the most of the pick selection that you have. But the other way that they can make the most of this draft is to also stay aggressive in finding a way to get back into the latter half of the first round and going with another pure upside swing such as Josh Christopher, uh, Cameron Thomas, Jaden Springer, names such as that. The Memphis Grizzlies win the 2021 NBA draft if they simply stay aggressive and make the most of their opportunity in this draft. There's a lot of change happening in Indiana with this Pacers organization. And another thing they're trying to change is ending the bad luck that they've had in recent drafts. The 2021 NBA drafts would be a win for the Indiana Pacers if they're able to get a guy with some star potential. They have had some bad luck, some bad choices in recent drafts uh, going back to the beginning of their current front office's tenure uh, in Indiana. They really need to add someone into their youth pipeline with you know, some high upside. They, they've swung for that before and have failed, but to walk away from, from this draft with one of those guys who could actually be a franchise changer, could be a part of the team and its rotation or even their starting five, or even better than that, with the 13th pick would be huge for a Pacers team that has a pretty weak youth pipeline as of right now, doesn't have a lot of talent in their younger player ranks and is sort of lacking on talented players on a rookie scale contract to walk away with a high upside guy who can contribute in the future for them and be a meaningful part of their future. It'll be a huge draft for the Pacers. They really have struggled with the draft in recent seasons. So any form of success in terms of hitting on a guy would be nice, but to, for the Pacers to win the draft, they need to nail this pick, get a guy with some solid upside. A draft night win for the Washington Wizards has absolutely nothing to do with the draft. This is Ed Oliver, your host for the Locked On Wizards, and this NBA draft would be a win if Bradley Bill makes a decision anytime soon. He holds our future in our, in his hands right now, whether we're going to blow it up or go for win now mode. And we know what our ceiling is. It is fourth, it's the fourth or fifth seed in the East, so it's not looking too bright. Personally, I would want to see Bradley Bill stay, but hey, if he does stay at 15, I would like to see Chris Duarte at Oregon. I would like to see Corey Kispert, um, Trey Murphy out of Virginia. Anybody that is a three and D type of player that can shoot the ball because we were terrible shooting threes last year, especially with, you know, we got to surround shooters around Russell Westbrook and um, Bradley, but Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill. Uh, so that's what it is for me. Now, if he decides to request a trade, and we get seven and 14 from the Golden State Warriors. Just get best player available and start the rebuild from there. So thanks for checking in. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Locked On Wizards podcast. We do need shooters. We need wing death. And we need guys that can play some defense. We were terrible defensively. We allowed 118 points per game and we were ranked 30th. That is if we go the win now uh, route and Bradley Bill stays. Now, if he leaves, like I said, just blow it up. Get picked seven to 14 from the Warriors and James Wiseman and Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. And let's just draft best player available. Thank you guys for checking in. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Wizards. Have a good one. And finally, the New Orleans Pelicans, they've moved down in the draft. They've added a center that they like, opened up some cap space, but the Locked On Pelicans podcast doesn't think they're done. Hey everyone, Jake Madison here from the Locked On Pelicans podcast. The 2021 NBA draft would be a win for the Pelicans if... They trade the 17th overall pick for some help to win right now, whether that's to the Utah Jazz and helping them alleviate their luxury tax bill by bringing on a guy like Boyan Bogdanovich or Joe Ingles. One of those two guys or maybe another veteran out there that could help the Pelicans put a winner around Zion Williamson, alleviate some of those concerns he might have long term about the franchise, show him he can have some success here. That would be a big win for New Orleans. But if they do keep the pick, don't overthink it. Add shooting whether that is Chris Duarte at 17 or Corey Kispert if he falls there add some more shooting space the court better for Zion and Brandon Ingram next year and that'll be a win for New Orleans in the 2021 NBA draft not every team can get a draft night win we'll see who the big winners and big losers are from this 2021 NBA draft and what are your plans on draft day well, you should change them to what I'm going to tell you about here. The Locked On NBA Draft Show featuring Chad Ford, Rafael Barlow, John Corrales, and all of our Locked On local experts. It'll be available on YouTube for you to watch. You will not get better draft coverage anywhere else. Will your team be a winner? Will they be a loser? We'll find out soon. The 2021 NBA Draft right around the corner. I can't wait to see what will happen. My name is Matt George and you are locked on now.